Here's everything you might have missed in the Secret Invasion trailer. The Marvel Cinematic Universe is shaping up to be chock full of multiversal mayhem, but it's also shifting our perceptions of the Skrulls. Over the weekend, Marvel head honcho Kevin Feige unveiled the first official trailer for Secret Invasion at D23. We're gonna break down everything that you might have missed in just a moment. And while we aren't spoiling any plot points from the show, we will be discussing the comic book source material. So if you wanna go into this show completely and blissfully unaware, I don't know, like make yourself a milkshake or something in the meantime and just chill out out. Hang on a second before you go swinging those jazz hands around. Okay, let's get into it, shall we? Based on the 2008 Marvel comic series of the same name, this Disney Plus show is a paranoid thriller that follows Nick Fury and company dealing with a sleeper cell of Skrulls. And these are far more frightening than the persecuted polymorphers that we saw back in Captain Marvel. In the original comics, the Skrull Queen Varanki led a sect of religious extremists to invade the Earth and replace key superhumans and high-ranking officials based on information they learned from studying the Illuminati. These guys just beef it at every single turn humanly possible. Why even have a secret group just to f*** up the Marvel Universe? Is that your goal? Doesn't sound like it, but you're doing great. <laughs> Their invasion and replacement of key superheroes created a climate of fear and distrust in the Marvel Universe. And that definitely comes through in this trailer, which feels like Invasion of the Body Snatchers meets Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. It also raises the question of which characters in the MCU are secretly scrolls just waiting for their time to strike. But the real question is, why exactly are the Skrulls striking at all? Typically portrayed as villains in the comics, the Skrulls that we met in Captain Marvel were actually refugees on the run from the warlike Kree who destroyed their homeworld. Although Carol Danvers set off with the Skrulls to find a new homeworld for them at the end of that movie, others clearly remained behind. But this splinter cell of Skrulls could be related to that group of religious extremists from the comics, or they could be looking for a different homeworld entirely, one far closer to where we live. Now, the trailer begins with Nick Fury beaming back down to Earth for the first time since he left our pale blue dot. And this must have been post-blip after we saw him get dusted in Infinity War, but before the event of Spider-Man Far From Home. Who's got my shoes? Clearly he found his shoes and now he's back on Earth. We see imagery evoking close encounters of the third kind, but the alien-like silhouette quickly morphs into Nick Fury looking like a vengeful fisherman. And notably, when we see him at the bar in the next scene, he's not wearing his eye patch, showcasing his scars from everyone's favorite flurkin. Oh, mother flurkin! You okay? Yeah, it's just a scratch. No. Fury seeks out Maria Hill in a Russian bar, seeking her help with this impending invasion. She says, for years you've been avoiding Earth. I've called for help plenty of other times and you've been pretty content to let those calls go straight to voicemail. Well, Maria, you have to understand, he uses a pager, he's old school. So how long has Nick Fury been gone? And also, where was Maria Hill, by the way? Because back in Far From Home, we saw that both Talos and Soren replaced Nick Fury and Maria Hill, respectively. Fury was off-world, but where was Maria? Was she deep undercover? Was she a scroll this entire time? And what about Galaga guy? Is he in on it too? Yeah, probably not. Now, as Fury himself says, this situation is different. That's why he's seeing to this personally. Fury talks about this as his war that he needs to fight alone, but he'll need some help if he wants to make it out in one piece. Fury meets with James Rhodes at a nice looking restaurant where he grills Rhodey about his security detail. The implication is there's a high likelihood that one or more of them could already be scrolls given Rhodey's top secret security clearance. Now, the scrolls certainly would have had time to infiltrate said detail, because during exclusive footage shown to D23, Rhodey tells Fury that he's actually known about the scrolls for some 15 years. Now, if Secret Invasion takes place in 2025, the furthest point in the MCU timeline, that would place Rhodey learning about the Skrulls right around 2010. And coincidentally, that's when Don Cheadle replaced Terrence Howard as Rhodey in Iron Man 2. Look, it's me. I'm here. Deal with it. Let's I move on. It also means that the this in his infamous boom you're looking for this must mean a Skrull. 
Yes. Kevin Feige also confirmed to D23 that Armor Wars starring Don Cheadle will take place immediately after the events of Secret Invasion. That series, based on the comic story of the same name, revolves around Iron Man's technology falling into the wrong hands. Now, if scrolls have infiltrated the US government, they could also likely have infiltrated the Department of Damage Control, which we see later in this trailer. So far, Damage Control are major players in Phase 4 in the same way that S.H.I.E.L.D. used to be before the Winter Soldier. As we saw in Spider-Man Homecoming, Damage Control originally partnered with Stark Industries. They have massive vaults full of all kinds of alien technology and spare Ultron parts. Given the Stark Industries drones we saw them using in Ms. Marvel, if they're also compromised by scrolls, it's only a matter of time until they can access some of Tony's designs for Iron Man-style suits as well. Or, you know, Occam's Razor and Rhodey was replaced by a scroll as well, leaving the real Rhodey to return in Armor Wars and clean up his counterpart's mess. Next time, baby. Another familiar face returning to the fold is Martin Freeman as CIA agent Everett K. Ross. We'll next see him dealing with an all-out war between Wakanda and Atlantis in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And before you take to the comments to say, aha, uh -huh, Dan, it's not Atlantis, it's Talokan, shut up. I know. We then meet another spy master in the form of Olivia Coleman as Special Agent Sonia Fallsworth. Now, it's not confirmed, but she could have a connection to Captain America if she's also related to James Montgomery Fallsworth. In the first Avenger, he fought alongside Captain America with the Howling Commandos during World War II. In the comics, he was the alter ego of the costumed hero Union Jack, who first appeared back in 1976's Invaders No. 7. Sonya's in a strange laboratory or a morgue filled with bodies under this mysterious cloth with glowing restraints. It almost looks like the same material as the photostatic veil that Black Widow would wear, so maybe this is a way to scan the DNA of victims, or it's keeping them alive because they've been replaced by scrolls. Or this could be a clue that we're dealing not just with regular skulls who can mimic appearances, but war scrolls who can replicate superhuman powers as well. These deadly scroll variants first appeared in 1991's Uncanny X-Men 275, and they nearly wiped out the Shi'ar Empire in the process. Either this or this scroll sleeper cell is part of the Super Scroll program monitoring the advent of enhanced individuals so they can claim their powers and eventually reclaim what was taken from them by the Kree. Of course, Sonya isn't afraid to get her hands dirty or chop off other people's fingers. Later, we see her interrogating someone being tortured in a meat locker. Now, said meat locker's also the scene of a heated firefight later on as someone with a gun hides while others cut through the lock. Sonya clearly seems to be aware of the scroll problem at hand, telling Nick Fury that he's in no shape for this fight. From what we've seen, these scrolls have a robust presence on Earth capable of pulling off elaborate terrorist attacks. We see them causing havoc in the streets of Russia, and when Talos goes to confront their leader, they reveal just how many there really are. Their leader, played by Kingsley ben is named Gravik, and he seems to be an original character created for the show. Described as a rebel scroll leader, he's meeting with Talos at the London Portrait Gallery. And if you look closely during this sequence, you can spot a few other Graviks off to the side before everyone in this room morphs into Gravik. And as confirmed by the photo credits on Disney's media site, we can see Gravik in scroll form later in the trailer, shouting in the street. With that said, the biggest question mark of all is still Amelia Clark's character. Some people believe she could be Varanki, the Skrull Queen and potential big bad of the show. Other reports claim she could be Gia, a Skrull operative introduced in 2019's Meet the Skrulls, which was basically the Americans, but for shape-shifting aliens. We then see Clark's mystery character saying this is just the beginning while talking to an unseen person. Later, she has a gun out next to a wall filled with masks, really hammering home the show's focus on hidden identities. And last but not least, we see her enter a lab with Russian writing on the door, where some device is clearly under construction. It's worth noting that Fury enters this same lab later in the trailer with his eye patch on, suggesting that A, this is a very important location, and B, there might be two Nick Furies out there. Why do we say that? Well, we get another parallel in this trailer with the opening and closing sequences. There are two very different looking Nick Furies coming out of the same ship. I mean, sure, one simply could have put his eye patch on and put a hat on or a different outfit, but this is definitely intentional. They're bookending the trailer with imagery designed to keep you guessing. Now, the other question is, what are those damage control agents looking for in that mysterious case labeled AR-4? That could be a damage control facility that Skrull agents invaded, or maybe they're recovering alien tech these Skrulls left behind. 
And last but not least, we also see Dermot Mulroney as President Ritson, the fictional president of the United States in this universe. His motorcade gets blown to smithereens by a pair of missiles, which lends further credence to Fury's worry that Rhodey and his entourage have already been infiltrated by Skrulls. Now, of course, with a series like Secret Invasion, we know that nothing will be as it seems, and I'm sure this trailer is filled with more red herrings than a Ralph Boner convention. Ralph, 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 Ralph. my husband, Ralph Boner? For now, though, just remember Secret Invasion's comic book tagline, who do you trust? Anyway, folks, there you have it. That's everything we spotted in the Secret Invasion trailer. Our questions will be answered when the series debuts on Disney Plus sometime in 2023. We'll have plenty of other deep dives into our top scroll suspects and other MCU goodness for you on Nerdist in the meantime, though. For now, tell us, what did you think of this trailer? Did you spot anything that we missed? And who do you think is a secret scroll in the MCU? Look, it's me. I'm here. Deal with it. Let's move on. Let us know in the comments below, and for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, make sure you stay tuned to Nerdist.com.